Hi friends, Nikola Tesla. This name is shrouded in myths and legends. The man who lived 100 years ago doesn't give rest to modern scientists. The genius of all times and peoples, whose inventions were far ahead of his time. He's called the apostle of electricity, a man who tamed lightning. In its significance, he's compared with Leonardo da Vinci, the genius of the era of the Renaissance. It is believed that Tesla laid the foundation for television, satellite communications, and introduced alternating current, a current without which humanity would have remained in the era of the Industrial Revolution. Did the Serbian genius create perpetual mobile and endless sources of energy? It's difficult to answer this question because Tesla's history and life is shrouded in mystery and many of his mysterious inventions are invented by contemporaries. It is believed that Tesla worked on the creation of radiation weapons and the Tunguska meteorite is also his handiwork. Where is the lie and where is the truth? No one can answer this question. Tesla is the author of numerous patents, including the so-called apparatus for utilization of radiant energy described in 1901, patent number 685957. Today, we will try to make on the same experience as Tesla more than 100 years ago and understand whether it is possible to use this device for real purposes, at least to supply with that power something. But before we start, a few words about the sponsor of this video, about the company GLC, which is one of the leaders in the field of production of printed circuit boards. You can order PCB of any complexity at the lowest prices. The price starts from $2 for 10 pieces. Interested viewers can watch a detailed video about the GLC factory on my channel. All links are in the description. So, the insulated metal receiver rises as high as possible from the ground. Wire connects it to one of the capacitor plates. The second plate is connected to the ground. In theory, the Earth is a source of negative electricity. Cosmic bodies, in particular stars, emit positively charged particles that, heating our receiver, should give it a continuous electric charge. The capacitor will be charged up to the breakdown of the dielectric layer. The charge current depends on the size of the receiving plate. Tesla offered an automatic system which would discharge the capacitor to the load. In other words, the interrupter as well as the system for converting the energy stored in the capacitor. So, as a receiver, we have aluminum foil glued to plywood. The current goes through the copper wire fixed in the center of the foil. The resistance of the millimeter section of plywood was measured. It is more than 220 mega ohm, so that it will be considered a dielectric. At first I used a capacitor designed for operation in AC circuits with a capacity of 16 microfarad, 250 volts, but the results were not impressive. Then I used a good electrolytic polar capacitor at 2200 microfarad. It is important that the capacitor has minimal leakage. I fixed the receiver or antenna on the roof. It is autumn now, but I chose a sunny day. As grounding I will have a gas pipeline. The pipe was cleared of paint. The stranded copper wire is wound and additionally pressed to the pipe with adhesive tape. For the purity of the experiment, the wire from the antenna doesn't touch the ground and is suspended in the air. All connections and wires were checked for breakage. The experiment began at noon. The sun shines brightly. On the street, plus 20 Celsius. First, I measure the initial voltage on the capacitor. Next, I turn off the multimeter so that its resistance doesn't have any effect. Turn on the timer and wait about 20 minutes.
Then I measure the voltage on the capacitor. As we see, it is 113 millivolts and continues to grow. What is the result? First, we need to understand that the patent shows us the principle of energy conversion. From the point of view of the invention, this is a thing which is quite working. Our antenna was at a fairly decent height of about 6 meters. There was a good grounding and in 20 minutes of the experiment, we have microjoules of the energy accumulated in the capacitor. Naturally, the smaller the capacity, the faster the capacitor will charge. But in the end, the stored energy will be the same. It depends solely on the area of the antenna. During the hour of operation, the voltage on the capacitor was 0.2 volts. It is important to indicate that the charging process didn't stop even at night, although in the daytime, according to my observations, the capacitor charged faster. To power even micro power loads, the kind of LEDs for only a few seconds, this device should work all day. Somebody will say, free energy, of course, but to use it for serious purposes, you will need a receiver with an area of a football field, and the receiver must be completely isolated from the ground and lifted to the maximum possible height, as well as you need the capacitors of a colossal capacity. The reason why the world does not use this technology is that the cost of a power plant of this type will never pay off. Solar panels or water heaters have a much greater efficiency. In addition, we must not forget that in our era, all kinds of radio waves fly in the air and naturally, the antenna will also convert energy from radio waves. And so, the design is very interesting and fully functional. But alas, it makes a little sense, except to show it in physics lessons. I think the experiment was successful. At least I got answers to interesting questions. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please rate it, share with friends. If you have questions related to electronics, ask them in our group. Link is in the description. Leave your feedback about this design as well as offer popular so-called fuel-free systems and as far as possible I will try to collect, test and show you. Now I say goodbye until new meetings with you was Kaysian TV.